Chris Keys for from your guitar in Nashville, Tennessee, joined by Jay Maskus of Dinosaur Jr. Jay, how you doing? Pretty good. How's it going? It's going good. We've talked, I think, 2017, we're at the Cannery. Today we're in the Brooklyn Bowl, right. a new venue in town, and you have a lot of different things. And I thought it would be fun to talk about this. I know you have a new Fender Telecaster signature, which was on the cover of a November, November issue. Yeah. But I thought it'd be fun to talk about this guitar, because I don't think anyone that's watching this right now expected you to have this guitar. So tell me about it, because it has a Fender neck. It's a phantom body shape, so tell me, tell me what's going on. Uh, yeah, it was a phantom guitar, and uh, a phantom it was always my favorite guitar shape. You know, the box phantom I always thought looked really cool, but I could never really get along with playing them, so I decided to just kind of make a playable one for me. And uh, so I had the, this phantom copy, and I got a neck from Fender, a Tele neck, and then a, a mastery whammy and uh you overhauled it with some fender and some, some signature noiseless parts. pickups and uh yeah and now it's i play it it's for one song i've got it set up in an open g for one song from the new album uh sweeping into space the new album what what is the song songs i ain't the first song on the album and what do you enjoy about the phantom obviously visually you said you like the body shape but now that you have one that's up to your standard of playing and being able to take on the road what do you like about it that you hear sonically that you're, you're pleased um yeah i don't know it's got the strat i like the two strat pickup sound both of them together you know is a different sound than i usually have and uh yeah it's a little bit thinner and gnarlier sounding too with fuzz because of the you know the strat kind of pickups and yeah, I just always like the shape a lot, so. Now what position is, I see the tape's got it kind of locked in place there. Is it in the bridge or in like in, uh? This is to lock it in these two. Okay. Then I switch it to this one when I hit the big muff. It's kind of like what I do with the Jazz Master. You know, I play clean in the middle with both pickups and then with the muff I go to the lead pickup. Could we actually hear the muff with this thing? Because I don't know if I've ever heard a Phantom with the muff combination. <laughs> And what uh, Teleneck is, or I guess it's a Telecaster neck, but you said this is no longer available through the website. This is a certain type um, of neck that you prefer. Yeah, Fender used to sell this neck on the website. It had jumbo frets already on it, and uh, but they discontinued it, I guess. So I tried to get one recently, and it's uh, they said they don't make them anymore. So is this one that you just had laying around at your house, or took it off a different guitar? Oh no, I think I got it from Fender. Oh. They were still making it at the time. Gotcha. I have it. I have the same neck on like three or four tellies at my house that. If I got some telly, you know, a Squire telly or something that I didn't like, I'd get this neck and suddenly I like the guitar. <laughs> now, that's a good segue talking about the telly neck and how much you prefer that, is to talk about your signature. Yeah. Can we have you pick that up and maybe hear, hear what that has to say too? Sure. Now, a lot of people obviously associate you for years. I can hold this for you. All right. Uh, with the Jazzmaster Live, but yeah. maybe people that aren't as steeped in the Jay Mascus world know that you've used the 58 top loader that you personally have owned on a lot of the solos for Dino. Yeah, it's in some rhythm too. You know? Yeah. Like feel the pain, the rhythm on that. And the beginning of start chop and the clean kinda. I use that guitar and um, yeah, I've seen it in some guitar shops and it's weird because it's like, it's like, hey, why is my guitar sitting in this room? It's not like a, guitar I designed or something. Yeah, it's like, like it's just a copy of my guitar. So when I see him, I'm like, why is my guitar sitting there? <laughs> it's a bit weird. Now, how did you get the 58? Because that's kind of a rare Telecaster and the fact that it's, I think, was it two years, 58, 59, they did the top loader t style bridge? Yeah, I didn't know anything about tellies. This was my first telly, so. Um, kind of just fell into it. Yeah, this studio in Boston where everyone recorded Ford Apache, the owner, Joe Harvard, had all this awesome gear, a lot of it which he bought from Beatlemania. Oh, wow. He bought all their stuff when they went out of business or whatever. And uh, yeah, he just 
I played this guitar on uh, Buffalo Tom. I was producing their album and kind of fell in love with the guitar there. And I was like, oh, if you ever want to sell it, let me know. He said, I could never sell this guitar. And then two months later, he called me. And <laughs> Things <bought> change. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, how long have you had that? So, like, I can't date back to the Buffalo Tom It was like sesh. 1990 I bought it. Wow. And then uh, since then, every album, almost every solo I played on that. I don't know why I let... I tend to like what I play more on that telly than any other guitar I have, so I always go to that usually for leads. Now, I've, I've seen interviews where you talk about you prefer older or older style Jazzmaster pickups because of how you EQ the amp. And so I'm curious how that, you know, like you kind of have how you figured out the amps that you like in terms of how it's set up. How has that changed with the Telecaster and bringing that on the road? Are those kind of lower output pickups as well? Um, I used to bring the 58 out in the 90s. I'd bring it on tour, and then I just stopped after a while. I got scared because that was precious. my favorite guitar. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now I, I use, um, this is a BG-1400, the um, Seymour Duncan, Billy Gibbons custom shop. Okay. That's why it's like a, you know, it's a noiseless thing. And, they say it's somewhere between a Filtertron and a P90 sound or something. Which seems sound. to work for me for the telly. And this one I found the McNelly pickup I really huh. liked. I guess the front guy from Canada. And uh, yeah, that's what I have for the new ones. And the old one, I just have the old pickups. And so the originals are still in that one? Yeah. Cool. Well, actually, he told me he had a 56 pickup he put in it. Hmm. I don't know why. I remember him telling me that, you know, when I was playing it and stuff. But it had a cool sound. I thought it, you know, sounded more like a P90 than a lot of tellies I picked up after that felt a lot more twangy and clean compared to that pickup. Now, uh, when this got spec'd out for your signature, what things are different or that you asked, you know, maybe you prefer, like you kind of talked about earlier, the neck profile that you like on this one. So is there anything that's kind of specific to this uh, signature model that maybe isn't reflected on your 58? Or is it pretty? Um, no, there's maybe some extra holes in the pick guard because <laughs> it, it wasn't the right number of holes. But other than that, they just kind of copied it. Yeah. Cool. And uh, typically, what are you now that you've got this and you're using it on stage, what are you using it for? Maybe the newer stuff or is it you're using it whenever you want? I'm using it for start shopping, and I, um, I tried it for Feel the Pain, which I hadn't done in a long time, um, just because I recorded Feel the Pain on it, and uh, I'm not sure we're still, it's a work in progress. Yeah. This is only our second show, so yeah, speaking of trying that, to how, figure it out. How does it feel to be back, you know, performing? I know you've done some stuff online and, like, outdoor stuff, but um, how does it feel to be back, you know, second day on tour? It's weird. It's definitely <laughs> weird. Yeah. I don't know what to think. It's great to be out of the house, you know, and yeah. uh, to see fans and play for people and, um, you know, realize, oh, maybe we're not as tight as I thought we were. Maybe we should have practiced a little more. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different with all fans. You know, we've only done shows with a few people or no people. Yeah. Or, I saw the kit. That's how I knew that this thing was in existence or in your orbit was through the KEXP uh, performance that you guys did not too long ago. Right. Uh, but I know that you have some other cool guitars in here. So let's let's keep moving. What what should we talk about next? I know that you have another Tele. Is it like a thin line? I think. Yeah, I've had that for a while. Um, Which is the beautiful purple sparkle. Yeah. I have Fender made me this. This is what I've been playing before I got the, you know, the blue one. I don't know how to fit this in. This is the one I used to use on the last tour. All right. Just trying to figure out, I like this guitar a lot. Now, when you had them build it, I know uh, John was telling us earlier that it was a, a commission. I think you said it was a custom shop, right? And so yeah. what, what did you ask them to build, like what kind of specifics? I'm sure, obviously purple. Purple's your favorite color. Mm -hmm. But uh, what other things were you asking for? Um, you know, jumbo frets I always like, That's, and to wear down the neck a bit, and um, I think they forgot the top loader at first, so it's got <laughs> the holes still, 
and I put a top loader on it after they sent me one. What do you like uh, about the top loader, if I can uh, interject quick, is, is it the just, feel thing or are you yeah, just used to it? I'm just used to it and uh, definitely can feel from playing other tellies that it's easier to bend the strings with it. I, I guess that's what I like about it. And a lot of people are saying, oh, it doesn't sustain as much, and, but I never thought of a telly as sustaining at no. all anyway, so who cares about that? Yeah, and, and I think you have enough firepower up here to sustain a rock, so... I yeah, I Big Muff will sustain with most things. Yeah. You know, so. Do you oh, know what okay. pickup is on the neck there? It's very unusual to me, I'm not... Oh yeah, this versed. is a TV Jones pickup. Oh. I've tried so many neck pickups, try to... And I did like this one, and then I found that uh, McNelly one is now my favorite. Yeah, let's, let's hear what this thing has to say. I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> She screams. Uh, yeah. John was also mentioning he had like a semi hollow jazz master. Yeah, I have the matching color jazz master that they just made me. Oh, that's, that's so cool. A thin line jazz master, although it's pretty heavy. I thought it would be really? lighter. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Yeah, it is actually got some it's weight like, to it. I was like, oh, this will be great to practice with. It'll be so light, but. Not so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ooh, she's oh. not in tune. Yeah, no. Now, is that something you use, uh, like specifically or is it a backup to your other jazz masters we're seeing here on stage or is there any i don't know i just got it trying to figure it out yeah i, I think i'm going to try it for the encore just to play it i've never played it on stage yet <laughs> that you have on a lot of your, your stuff. It's, it's a, yeah, it seems to. It does shit for cameras, but it is. It seems it's, to go with the sparkles. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, but it definitely gives it a certain vibe. It's very cool. I, I, I appreciate a, a good mirrored pick guard. Yeah. It looks good too with the, the pickup covers too. Oh yeah, I had my uh, tech guy spray paint them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Here I thought it was going to be like some special cover. Yeah. Custom shop request. No, nope, looks nope. pretty cool. I'll bring out this telly. I kind of, uh, I Ooh, mean, this, this is Jazz a... Master I set up for C sharp. Ooh. For the C sharp songs on the new album. Um, and you were saying to me off camera that that's because normally you'd put the capo in the ninth fret, trying yeah. something different. Right. And um, I just have this pickup wired on, so it's just got the one pickup, and it's. What pickup is that? Obviously, it looks like a Firebird of some sort, but what? Which yeah, one? it's the same as the St. Vincent guitar. Ah. I got it from Ernie Ball. I guess it's DiMarzio. Because I used the St. Vincent guitar on the album, and it's trying to get the same sound out of a, the Fender. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. Can we hear it real quick? Sure. Just because, yeah, I can't say that I've ever seen that style of a pickup in jazz. <laughs> Now, do you have any, like, not issues, but is it kind of like a learning curve or trying to figure out with the different tension with having the capo and then learning these songs or playing these songs with, you know, the full scale but uh, drop tuning? Is there any type of difference to that, like a tension um, thing or intonation? Well, no, because I recorded most of the songs like that. That, okay. And, uh, but for other songs, yeah, like Watch the Corners was like that. But on tour, I'd always play with a capo on the ninth fret, so I'm gonna try it, you know, with this guitar now. That'll, it sounds a lot different. Going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you're gonna play some metal, I feel like. Yeah. Well, I would love to see that, uh, yeah, that tuxedo telly. 
if I may give it a nickname. Yeah, it looks um, pretty snazzy. I asked Fender if they had any guitars that would stay in tune in a C sharp. <laughs> they just came out with this and they sent it to me. So I feel like only you could get away with that question. If I asked them, they'd tell me to frig off. <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't know. A Floyd so Rose. So it's my I did not first Floyd that. Rose, and it's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, you, you make the mastery work for you with the Jazz Master stuff. You really, yeah. but that's a whole different beast with the Floyd Rose. Yeah, I'm, I, I always like to pull it out, maybe try to. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like maybe you could get my Slayer on. Yeah, or something, you Terry know? King or Dimebag Daryl. Yeah, I feel like right. those those are the songs you might need to play in that thing. I have one in mind. So which one is it? Can I ask? A uh, Mountain Man from our first album. Yeah. I used to play a Strat on it. A Rory Gallagher Strat and uh, got stolen. And then I got another one, but ah. But I'd use the whammy a lot. But this will be even more intense than that. So this will be very dramatic. That'll be another maiden voyage for the guitar tonight, I guess. Let's try out. <laughs> Looks like we've gone through all the guitars. Obviously, we don't want to remiss on acknowledging the jazz masters that are surrounding us. Lou has your signature squire over here. Yeah. So obviously, we covered these in the last two rig rundowns we've done. So if you want to learn more about these, check out those rig rundowns. So just to save us on time, yeah. but maybe I'll have you put on your signature tally here, and then right. walk us through your pedal board again. Amps completely the same as the last time. You've kind of figured yeah. out your sound with that, and you let it be. Right. I appreciate that. Is there anything going on here that is different? Because anyone that checks out your pedal board photos over the years online yeah. knows that you have a tiered system in terms of stacking your pedals on top of things. So is there anything different than the last time? Yeah, I tried to stuff a couple of mini pedals in there. Um, Which ones would these uh, those be? This SL drive. Okay. I just needed another tone with the telly for a new song that I didn't have enough. So yeah, I like the sound of that. And I'm using the Hendrix vibe oh. thing. I used to have a chorus, but I'm trying the vibe thing instead. Now, could we hear the SL with the telly? Cause you mentioned that's kind of the reason you got it. And then maybe like on and off, just so we can kind of hear the difference. Sure. I mean, off, it'll sound like nothing probably. I mean, I also have it to turn it down too. That's another of my tricks. I use the overdrive to like kind of turn it down and have some hair on it also. So it mixes with my setup better. Gotcha. So that SL is really there just kind of for the telly. Yeah, gotcha. right now I, I haven't figured out what else to use it for. And then uh, how you're using the Hendrix, is that just kind of a pedal that you're trying out or is it, it get used specifically for Actually, any songs? Actually, uh, the same song I was using it on for one part of it. Um, yeah, just another. <laughs> Now, 
I'm not familiar with that pedal. I know the series line, but does that pedal have like a fuzz circuit in it too, or is it just more of a Univibe thing? Yeah. Like a real. I mean, I don't think there's a photo cell in it or anything. Yeah. But I guess it's trying to approximate a Univibe. There's no fuzz in it. They have a separate fuzz one. Got it. Okay, they that's have a whole line of them. Yeah. And, and I just switched to the Jackrabbit tremolo instead of the custom audio electronics one just to because it's smaller and it has a similar sound just so I could fit another pedal in there. I've never heard of the Jackrabbit, so could it's we maybe a sewer, you know. Oh, okay, could we maybe hear it? I just have this my usual setting is pretty intense. <laughs> Super chop. Yeah. Yeah, I like pedals when you know they're on. Yeah. <laughs> That's not subtle, Jay. No, I'm not I'm not that a fan of subtle. Yeah, I can tell. I can yeah. tell. <laughs> I can tell. Now, uh, I see that you have the Box of Rock, obviously, that's your ZVEX pe pedal you yeah. did, did with them, but uh, I know, I think it came out after the last one we reviewed it, Charlie's a big fan of it, was the Ren and Cuff, uh, was it Garbage Patch? Garbage Face. Garbage yeah. Face, yeah. yeah. And I don't see that on here, is that something you kind of just use for, like, studio stuff, or is... Or just, you know, smaller gigs, it's a uh, copy of that Big Muff, so I just, if I have that, I'll just use that instead. Yeah. It's also got a range master part of it like this Germania thing. So that's both in one pedal. Yeah, I've used it just small gigs around town or practicing or something. Now, is there anything else on this board that you've changed or is it kind of is what it is? I yeah, I haven't changed much except that since, uh, yeah, since the last tour. Which now it's going almost probably two years, close to two years, probably since you guys were on the road, huh? Yeah, a while, for sure. Well, Jay, I, I truly appreciate your time, and uh, I, I think it's awesome that you've kind of brought a few more tricks along. You got, you know, hit up Fender for some cool new designs, and congratulations uh, on the signature. I know you already had the Jazz Master, you got the Squire Jazz yeah. Master as well. Before I let you go, I'm curious because uh, myself and I know a few other guys on staff have the Squire signature. Mm -hmm. Is there any conversations between you and Fender to maybe release a Tele version uh, in the Squire line? Um, no. No? I guess because the Road Warrant kind of is a lower price point than that first Jazzmaster you did in the late 2000s was like a higher end one. Yeah, that's the one I turned into the C sharp guitars, okay. my first signature guitar, yeah. Yeah, and then the Squire one kind of met, kind of helped, you know, a, I think they're kind of trying to get away from having signature Squire models. I don't know why. Yeah, as I say, if Fender has any ears to this, I would say don't do that. Because uh, some of us can afford those, you know? <laughs> well, Jay, I do appreciate your time. I'll let you guys get on with Soundcheck, and uh, thank you very much. All right, thanks a lot.